Hey, welcome to For the Story, the podcast that's the Kurt Cobain of podcasts. That's right, two more years and Avery and I are going to end it all. And uh, one of us is going to be blamed on about it, and I'm pretty sure it's oh, Avery. Oh my god. <laughs> Avery, a lot of people tell oh you god. you're like Courtney Love, right? <laughs> no, I was hoping you weren't going to use this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm Ash, by the we way. We were talking about intro. Oh, and I'm Avery. Um, we were talking about intros the other time because we couldn't think of one. And Ash brought this one up. I was like, oh, I don't think I want to say that. And he just did it anyway. <laughs> this week we watched Black Panther 2, The Rise of yes, Killmonger. Yes, we did. <laughs> Is that really what it's going to be called? It's probably going to be called, uh, well, we used the one Black Panther villain. <laughs> Black Panther 2, we are- fully loaded. Black Panther 2. <laughs> Our, we only had one villain help <laughs> help <laughs> oh yes this, this no time he, has he didn't watch that oh <laughs> that's like our sequel to our podcast our podcast with, <laughs> for the story with capes five the story but and we do six words at the end of every episode that's instead. right that's right hey, um hey, yo. this week we actually coming saw this summer <laughs> no <laughs> um in color <laughs> uh yeah we we actually watched us mm-hmm. we saw it last weekend um we we've been trying to do like a jordan peele twofer kind of deal we put get out out or, or a review of the the movie get out, uh, get out, out jordan peele's directorial yes yes uh his directorial debut yes. that came out i think early morning wednesday for you guys mm-hmm. um and now we're here to talk about us and i'm pretty sure uh, get out, just... out is the name of the sequel for get out right yes it get outer actually <laughs> Get out and get Got out. out. Er, er. Remember when there was Dumb and Dumber? Er. Remember yeah. when that movie came out and like every- yeah. yeah, and then there was a prequel to Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, th- th- that doesn't need to exist. Anyway, <laughs> Dumbinatrix. Um, that would be the name of their like set. Dumbinatrix. <laughs> That's their online store. Their Etsy. Uh, dominatrix store dominatrix oh god shoot me um <laughs> god uh but we're here we uh, we talked about get out we're here to talk about us and also known as black panther 2 also known as get out er and got got out is the alternative title yeah i mean also we should say at the end of this episode we are announcing our picks for the month of april so stay tuned to the end of the episode for that Cause it's gonna be a good one. We got some weird shit coming for you. I know what my pick is, and Ash is gonna hate it. Oh, I know what my <laughs> pick is, and Avery is gonna think I'm a sociopath. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, Grave of the Fireflies didn't do that. <laughs> I was the one who cried at it. You sick fuck. Yeah, you were like, you're gonna cry, you bastard. <laughs> and you were like, yeah, I didn't cry. <laughs> I'm like covered in but, uh, sticky tears because. It, it's pretty cool because like Ash and I, are, this whole selection series that we've been doing where we do picks in between major like theater releases has pretty much been boiled down to cinematic terrorism for each other. And I think it's a good theme for pretty us. Sure. It works really well. I'm Hamas. <laughs> uh, oh. uh, your honor. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Fun fact. That's not true. <laughs> Fun fact about the podcast. But, uh, neither one of us have any ties to any terrorist organizations. Welcome to For the Story, the only podcast that doesn't have any ties to terrorist organizations. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> the only podcast that doesn't. Yeah, we're looking at you, Joe Rogan. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Maybe because I was going to say that. No one would be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. Oh, my God. But, yes, so here we are. We're going to talk some movies. That's what we do on this show. Um, and, like Ash said, stick around for our picks. But first, we like to start off by talking about some stuff not related to what we've seen or what we're reviewing uh, this week. Uh, some like Netflix shows we talk about, all sorts of good stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ash, do you want to start? Oh, I haven't really watched anything new, so I'm gonna. Yeah, it's been like two days since we talked. Yeah. To this. <laughs> so I'm gonna just do a recommendation. Uh, I'm gonna recommend the TV show Love. Uh, it's a Netflix original uh, starring Gillian Jacobs and generic Jewish guy number one. Oh man! Uh, and it's about <laughs> all star cast. <laughs> Kyle Kinane's in one episode. Uh, oh, cool! Re- uh, unrecognizable, but somehow recognizable. Larger gentleman's also in it. Oh, there's a couple of yeah. them. Yeah, 
Uh, <laughs> his parents. What a, what a torturous name. His parents. <laughs> really, his parents typecast. Him. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> typecast by my parents is a great name for a sitcom uh, about like a thirty-eight year about old. Michael Sarah. About Michael Sarah. <laughs> it's a docu series. <laughs> <laughs> typecast by my parents the doc the M- michael sarah story something like that it's an autobiography oh, yeah i love it starring ashton kutcher <laughs> michael and- sarah where are you at <laughs> <laughs> ashton kutcher as michael yeah. sarah <laughs> oh my god yeah excellent but that shows about like a sex addict played by J- jillian jacobs and like guy who's also not very good at relationship uh, and they like hook up and discover how to improve themselves through their relationship. It's cute. It's sweet. It's pretty funny, but also deeply sad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. See, I can get behind funny, but sad. I like that. <laughs> I mean, I would hate my my life, but. I mean, like, I need movies to feel emotion. So <laughs> pretty much that's exactly what I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. I have to anyway. <laughs> I have to live my emotions through television. It's okay. <laughs> totally normal. Vicariously, exactly. Um no, that's not true. Um mostly. But here we are talking about a movie. Anyway. <laughs> um yeah, so I saw some stuff this week yeah. since we've talked last. I've been binging Tim and Eric awesome show Great Job. And I'm pretty sure my brain is falling apart. Yeah. It's great. It's nonsense. It's complete nonsensical humor which is amazing. It's just like, if you want to turn your brain off and watch the most pointless shit, like the most pointless shit. It would be a TV <laughs> show of this podcast. <laughs> just like the waveform, <laughs> like broadcast with our voices. Oh. Yeah. Um, I think that's our YouTube that channel. Great. <laughs> that's our, that is our YouTube channel. By the way, guys, we have a YouTube channel. We didn't even know about it until like a couple months ago. And I found out that Podbean, which is our, like our host, that's who we, up, where we upload our stuff, set up a YouTube channel for us and has been posting things to it for us. Like just episodes, but they have like, a, like it actually looks really nice. They take like our, like our image that we sometimes use. Sometimes it's two in the morning and I don't feel like making one, but like <laughs> they take that and then like have like a picture of the waveform. It's actually kind of cool. Um, and we're really hard to find on YouTube cause we have like no subscribers, but if you guys want to, I guess, I don't know. Some people listen to podcasts on YouTube, right? <laughs> That's somewhat a thing. Just <laughs> so, like disembodied heads that are in jars, mostly. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm not going yeah. for a walk, so what am I doing here? Huh? <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we, we have YouTube. Basically, my point is you could get it. You could pretty much listen to us anywhere. You must have found us through one of those channels if you're listening now. So, But um, here we are. Yep. Um, so I watched Tim and Eric. What else did I fucking watch? Oh, I, I reactivated my Shutter account. Okay. Humble brag here. Um, and they have the, this like streaming thing that they do. It's just like a playlist of horror movies that is always going on, which is perfect for me because I like putting things on and falling asleep. Mm-hmm. And it's just infinite horror movies. And there's like three different little channels. Um, and there's one like like they have like a playlist for the week, but I was in a falling asleep halfway through, so I never see all of them. But uh, they uh, they they keep putting this one up called the Reef. It's about these people who like they're all Australian and they get on a boat and then in any boat movie the boat like sinks. Of course, right? so it's yeah, yeah, boats like, are terrible. Boat movie, yeah, if if there's a boat in a movie, it's gonna sink. That's just the trope. That's how it goes. And um, they end up just like floating in the ocean and get to a reef and then they get eaten by sharks. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> and that's all I have to say about that. Let's talk about us, about you and me, Ash. I just feel like we've Sit gotten down. farther away from each other, even though we live in the <laughs> same cities that we lived in before. And I just feel like uh, if I stop doing this voice, my lungs are going to collapse. Oh, my God. Did it happen? <laughs> Okay, shit. Well, <laughs> oh my god, that's my best Lupita Nyongo in this film impression. Oh my god, <laughs> I um can't talk properly, and my exposition will take ten minutes extra long. 
Oh man, that hurt me <laughs> emotionally. <laughs> <Sorry>, listeners, <laughs> emotionally and physically, my poor ears. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there you go. Um, that is something that happens in this movie, which we will get to. Ash, yeah, what were your expectations for us going into it and having already seen Get Out? Uh, I have the alternative position. I hadn't seen Get Out before I saw this, but we'll talk about that in a second. I was expecting, uh, honestly, I was talking to my friend, uh, not friend, coworker. Sorry, dude. Uh, Dominique, the human <laughs> highlight reel. Uh, you just downgraded that person yep. live on the air. Yep. <laughs> um, we were talking about the movie and he was like, yeah, like he, he he's black, right? And so he's like, yeah, I'm kind of worried. It looks like it's the same themes of like, uh, it's just like, you know, white, like white personality versus black personality. And that's kind of what it seemed like to him. Blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah, that's interesting. It does seem kind of, and we were talking about like, yeah, he took like since the first Obama presidency to make uh get out and uh took two years to make us to make us yeah so we didn't have high that's hopes a, going that's in definitely an impression i got yeah okay interesting hey, all right it's weird that it took him so long to make us because honestly making a child only takes nine months <laughs> okay it should have technically been 18 <laughs> months total uh right um <laughs> yes uh okay I'm a little yeah. baby no, let's not go in this direction. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I, made, I made whoopsie. Dodge the bullet there. <laughs> Dodge the bullet there. Um, so, all right. As far as this movie goes, I hadn't seen Get Out uh, before I went to go see Us. Um, I knew that Get Out was critically acclaimed. People liked it a lot. Um, from what I had heard from pre-screenings of Us uh, is that it was really good. So I was actually pretty hyped. Um, I remember seeing a trailer before one of the other movies that we saw that we reviewed on the podcast. I can't remember which one, um, but uh, I, I was super excited for this movie, and I went in and like basically totally cold. You know, I had just seen like the one trailer, and uh, yeah, so I was pretty pretty amped up. I don't know if I was disappointed or not, which I think we'll talk about that in a little bit. Mm. Yeah, um, but. Yeah, it's interesting because I watched Get Out after this and realized how much better of a movie Get Out actually was. Yep. So that's definitely like an important thing that we need to talk about because Get Out, like you said, he spent like however many years, like 10 years almost yeah. working on Get Out and us more like two years. It kind of seemed like he was a little bit pressured to put us out more quickly than he would either would have liked or he, I don't know, maybe he was just firing him off. He was just like, I got another one right here. Well, there you go. Chelsea There's Peretti was pregnant when he was writing this, so maybe he was thinking about his children. What a good guy. Yeah, that could, that could be, yeah, there, there you go. Yeah, that too. Who was that? Chelsea Peretti. Is that his wife? Yeah, it's his wife. She's Chelsea Peretti. She's is? Uh, from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. She's Oh my Gina, God, yeah. The Italian looking one. Chelsea Peretti. Yeah. Oh, cool. She's. Been, I've seen her in other stuff too. Yeah. Um, but cool. All right. I did not know that. There you go. Um, yeah. So what are some pros of this movie, Ash? Let's start there. Cause I feel like we, we gotta be fair. Cause there is good stuff about this movie. There is good stuff. I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think? I think it's got the triple threat. It's got really great acting. Winston Duke and Lupita Nyong'o kill it. The child actors, uh, uh, but Lupita Nyong'o, and especially, I liked Winston Duke a lot. Uh, that's the guy. Which one was Winston Duke? Yeah, Gabe Wilson, the dad. Yeah, the dad. Uh, he was really yeah. great. He just even like how he would carry himself after getting hurt very early in the movie. He was really funny and had brought a lot of the levity in the movie out. He's just a very good actor. He was M'Baku in Black Panther. Uh, Lupita Nyong'o oh, yeah, okay. was oh, super good. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a really good actress. I don't know if she should have been told no a couple times or directed differently. Uh, the movie shot super well. Um, and yeah, I definitely agree with the you soundtrack. There. I feel was like good. I think the soundtrack was a little lacking compared to get out. Mm -hmm. I think the soundtrack and get out was like perfect. But he also There's used a lot three more... songs for the whole movie. And this was like a lot more yeah. music. It felt like the, the stripped down version of five on it was like, such a good choice mm -hmm. but then there was like a weird song that played at the beginning that oh, <laughs> like, oh. 
Yeah. <laughs> it made uh, Sid and I like laugh at the beginning of the movie. Especially because that like, fucking shit. intro shot of just the rabbits was like an, an hour. odd choice. <laughs> like it was yeah. so fucking long. Yeah. Jesus Christ. And uh, I don't know. Most of the music was pretty good. I think I think they probably they knocked it out of the park with Get Out and this. Five, using five on it in a stripped down fashion was like a really unique choice mm-hmm. and really good. Um so I, I definitely was all about that. Um, this movie shot just as well as Get Out is. Um, it seems whoever, I don't know what hand Jordan Peele has in the cinematography, if any at all, but or if he hires the same person. Uh, or But this movie looked like very similar to Get Out in a lot of ways. A lot of the framing looked really mm-hmm. similar. The lighting was different, um, though. Like, notably. Yeah, the lighting was definitely different. There, there was a, a stronger, uh, like, it seemed like they they really blue toned up a lot of the darks mm-hmm. uh, compared to Get Out, which like actually used the the darkness really powerfully. It and almost seems like, like they recorded like and they wanted it here, to be darker. Could've, yeah, they could have used it pretty well. I feel like. Yeah, and it seems like it didn't turn out as well. Yeah. Um. But uh, still, a lot of it looked really good. Um, a lot of like the night scenes, I noticed that they didn't like really blue tone up. But the scene that I'm thinking in particular that they really blew up, and it's like on the IMDb IMDb page. I'm like looking at it right now. Is when the girl's like in the maze and sees the the other twin girl. That's evil. Yeah, that was a very it's blue really. Scene. Yeah, and I don't know if that's this is necessarily a bad thing. I think it 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 looked pretty effective especially on the big screen yeah but it, it didn't had, seem consistent yeah, with some of the other nighttime exactly. scenes right? it wasn't consistent and yeah yeah it seemed kind of touched up and like a but very weird, that's okay i didn't like any of the job wanted, actors so that didn't help oh really yeah none of them. yeah um i i think like, i don't know i guess they, they, they seem serviceable but there there was like a, a maybe perhaps an undue focus on them in the middle of the movie but I thought that those are some of the stronger parts of the movie. Like a lot of the comedic levity, especially brought on by Winston Duke, specifically Winston Duke and Tim Heidecker, who, by the way, is in this movie, like it's just out of nowhere. Um, a lot of that, I feel like, was some of the best parts of the movie. That whole like center section. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I love the part where Tim Heidecker dies, but his last words are him turning towards the family going, free real estate. Because <laughs> they took his house. Avery. Yeah. It was free real estate the whole time. Right. That was the twist of the movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so fucking good. Um I, I liked I liked having Tim Heidecker in there. It's always fun to see him pop up in weird places. That's also kind of a con though. I want to talk about that once we get to the cons. Mm-hmm. Um because I... it's hard to take that guy seriously. Yeah. Um yeah, it's just how it is. But uh, yeah, Lupita Nyong'o, absolutely fantastic performance. Mm-hmm. Like, definitely the strongest in the entire movie. Um, at least when she's playing Adelaide. Yeah. Maybe when she's read, like, like Ash displayed for us earlier in the movie. You know, we could save this for a con section, but definitely slowed down a lot of the exposition. Oh my! Which was kind of just delivered, like offhanded. Yeah, it was. Which I so much. <laughs> Yeah, and and I felt like that's something that Jordan Peele I thought was really good at, especially in Get Out. Yeah, like he didn't really he did the TV need thing, to have it, but it was like, but that was towards the end of the movie to tie up loose ends. And also, you kind of already got it at that point. Like with this movie, it's like yeah. you had no idea what was going on until she monologued, which was like it seemed unnecessary. It didn't really fit, and. Honestly, it kind of undercut a lot of the horror because mm-hmm. this other family comes into their house and just stands there and then it, they're like, go get them. <laughs> and they're just running around and it's almost like a a spoof. <laughs> it felt like a comedy sequence. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, so comedy lives in the wide shot, Avery. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so... What else do we have for pros? Um, you know. <laughs> yep. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean. Well, like, did you like the movie? Because I didn't. I. It's tough to say. I felt. I found. 
I felt it to be very middling. I expected to really like it though. So coming out of the movie and being like, I don't know if I like that or not was a weird impression uh, for me. I will say like, I you know? did like that cause the way that it was marketed, at least from what I had seen was like basically only up to the point where they're in the house and you didn't yeah, realize that it was exactly. this more widespread thing than just localized to Lupita Nyong'o and her family, um, yeah. which I thought was a good choice, and they, they didn't show us all of that. Yeah, that was some of the better parts of the movie once it went beyond them. Yeah. Because once the family's in the house, all of the horror is like really undercut. Because that felt When they're just like standing in the driveway. Is like, cause it yeah, was so contained. exactly. Yeah, because Get Out was really contained. But I guess they had, they had the money to expand beyond that. Maybe they just wanted to. It was 20 mil, yeah. Yeah, so they were like, let's let's do it. <laughs> but uh, I am glad that they didn't spoil anything after that because I felt like, you know, I kind of get the impression that that Jordan Peele had that plan and he was just like, this would be good. We'll have the family come into the house and then they'll get them. And that was like like the end of the, the thought process there. and Because everything else seemed really almost like out of place. This movie goes takes a weird turn after that. And like everybody has a twin all over the world. And then they're holding hands across America. And, and For, I, I didn't... Yeah. I think I missed the message there. I don't know if I missed the message there or if there just wasn't much of a message there. You know what I mean? So my feelings about this that, are complicated. Because... There is a message. It's just not as good. <laughs> yeah, I got the impression when when Red and the the Red family come into the house, mm-hmm. and Red has her monologue. It takes a long time, but there's a part when she's explaining. For every time you succeeded, I failed. Mm-hmm. Basically, yeah. like they're mirror personalities, mirror people. Um, and then there's a line where she says, we are Americans. Yeah. And I, and I thought that was bringing on some whole thing and I guess it's I did too. True. And that gets dropped. I thought that, that, that the message that they were going to end up going for was like, we are the people who have been forgotten, but we're also just as good as you are. Mm-hmm. I thought that's what they were going for. And for all um, intents and purposes until the very end, you think that they aren't and then they are, but like, does that mean any, and like, they do the hands across America thing, which is something that super failed in America. <laughs> like for yeah, they they yeah. succeeded. The whole idea was <clears throat> to be noted. I, I yeah, yeah. I know. It, it just seemed like I thought that that was the social message, and they say it like once, and then it kind of gets forgotten for comedic levity mm-hmm. for like almost thirty minutes, you know. <laughs> and then like it's a little bit brought up at the end of the third act when she she goes down into the the under ground place which looked like atl i don't know if you guys have ever been to the atlanta airport (laughs) it looked like (laughs) but uh she she went underground into there and saw like their living quarters where all these people were and and i i didn't know if that was supposed to be some kind of dream state like she or if it was a literal thing that was happening it was supposed to be more of a dream state because through the looking glass that's so was she fighting inner demons (laughs) <laughs> like okay so i got maybe that it was like an intense anti-capitalist message where um, okay essentially okay. a group of people the tethered which like real quick i'll get into the fact that they start out being like oh yeah we got to kill you so we can become untethered and then they drop that real quick but also don't yeah and like it's it's relevant but also not but they're like a government created <clears throat> uh entity that the government gives up on uh, which I thought was like a metaphor for generally just like, right? Okay, like how yeah, like government institutionalized poverty um, and just general like. So it kind of is what I was thinking. Like it, they were supposed to represent impoverished or like forgotten Americans, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, so all, and also trying to show that like a lot of it's just luck, but also not like it was just like I think that. It would have been really good if they hadn't done all the explanations the way they did, because I feel like he overwrote his explanations. Maybe he did. And like Maybe because of did. that, like all the metaphors that would be really incredible, like kind of got like overlord. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, did you notice like there's a really like confusing like 
uh, title crawl at the beginning that says they're over one billion kilometers of of underground chambers in the contiguous United States or something like that. Do you remember that? Yeah. It said something weird like that. And I was like, oh, these are going to be mole people, dude. Like, hell yeah. But that also kind of gets dropped. I mean, they're they're like, like they do live, they live underground in, in this one spot. I guess it's supposed to be implied that they're all over the U.S., these clone people. Yeah, there, there's a clone but, of every, I, but also, it doesn't make sense because the government gave up on them, but there's still like one for everyone. That doesn't make yeah. sense. Like what? Yeah, for, even for the kill, kids. How long ago did they give up on them? Yeah. <laughs> it, like, how yeah. long have they been <laughs> like, planning this? Like, this seems like yeah. a lot of planning. Like, it seems like 40 years and they gave up like eight years ago. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Do they like, just automatically do whatever their counterparts up top do and like fuck, but then somehow the exact same like egg and sperm enter in to make the same children? Like it doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if he was really... It is kind of like a fantasy concept, I suppose. He's not really going for... Similarly to Get Out, like it's not grounded in reality. No. Which kind of makes me think I that more the more. end is is more like a dream state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe Get Out more too, mm -hmm. honestly. I, I agree completely. Because at least he had some like fake science behind it. You know? Like, oh, yeah. we just cut out everything but your brain stem and then put somebody else's brain in your body. You know? But with this, it just kind of seemed like a mirror society representing impoverished Americans. Which I kind of I kind of like that. I, like I mean, it. like, I do cut. Yeah, I like that message. Like, I see what he's getting at. He's trying to say something, but it seemed like it lacked the punch that Get Out had. Yeah. Because Get Out really had a honed social message. Yeah. And like for and this one, I think it was supposed to be reflective of like our impoverished and kind of forgotten about citizens are slowly being left alone by our government under like the current, like, you know, because the, of the regime change yeah. uh, and like specific like less fortunate groups are losing a lot of what the government was helping them with. And I think it was supposed to be that pointed, but it kind yeah, of, I, I like that too. Got yeah, lost. it did kind of get lost and it seemed like it got lost. And even like in Jordan Peele's interviews, he says things like it, it's really not as complex as people are trying to make it out to be mm. like we might be over explaining it right now. Maybe he just wanted to make a movie that was like that. Yeah. Or maybe he had a big social message planned and then was like, I don't really know how to finish this and then turned it into just kind of a stock horror movie. Yeah. That wasn't really all that scary, like, to be honest. Yeah, it wasn't. It was a lot of <laughs> jump scares. Not very effective, in my opinion. And like, I don't know, like it. It was cool in a way that it served a purpose of like, yeah, it's like a blacks only horror movie. It's like black hereditary, but with less of right. me caring because it's not as good. Um, but, you know, mm. that's cool in its own right. Representation is awesome. But that being said, when you put out a movie like Get Out and then you do kind of a by the beats horror movie, I'm not. You know, sold as, as strongly. Yeah, I, I completely hear that. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, there's the, a muddled social message is definitely one of my biggest cons for this movie. Um, and I, don't, I found that I still liked it. It was still good. Like, you, know, from the, you definitely probably didn't have the same issue as me where I was, like, looking for it very aggressively throughout the movie. Yeah, and that I kind of I kind of was, too. Oh, you were? Okay, because that, that was <laughs> yeah, taking I was me taking out for of it, it. And I feel like it lessened my enjoyment to, uh, yeah. you know, I kept going, like, oh, is that what it's about? And I had the same reaction when they went, like, we're Americans. Like, I had the same reaction, of, like, oh, is this the social message? And then I'm like, no, nope, that's not it. Or is it? It kind of gets forgotten, and then they just go and kill Tim Heidecker. Yeah, well, you know, you know who hasn't? There was a point, there was a point that, like, maybe about a third of the way through the movie, after the first act, when the family finally shows up, and I'm like, oh, this is creepy, this is really ramping up, they're gonna kill these people and hide around the house, this could be terrifying i can't wait but then I, like there was a point as soon as they stood in the living room where it just deflated mm -hmm. and i was like oh this isn't scary at all is it yeah. <laughs> this just is not a scary movie but it kind of surprised me in that the the actual like fun level of it really picked up mm -hmm. like the movie like was still paced pretty decently so even though it wasn't really scary anymore it was still enjoyable to like follow these characters and especially follow around like gabe was hilarious it kind of felt <laughs> like, you know zombie land-esque is that weird to say it really did there was a lot of odd comedic undercutting that really just stripped a lot of the horror mm -hmm. away from it yeah oh like, there was uh one theory that I saw online that I kind of liked about this movie and I wanted to bring it up to get your opinion on. Is that all right? All right. Um, yeah, let's hear it. So they have the theory that Pluto and the actual boy, what's his face? 
Um, um, uh, Jason Wilson. Yeah, we were actually switched at birth uh, as well. Oh, and like that. Okay, kind of, like you know how he gives her the look at the end of the movie when it's revealed. Like, oh shit, yeah. I was the bad guy the whole time. That trope, and then he puts down the mask and like has kind of a knowing look in his eye. Yeah. So oh, they maybe. So the whole idea was that like that magic trick that he was doing was yeah. what caused him to burn his face. Oh, totally. And yeah, and like I, I and that's totally why he that. that was the only time that character was ever scared of fire. You know, that yeah. character was lighting shit on fire and just being a fucking sociopath the whole time. Like yeah, so exactly. it was also theorized that they were also switched. And I like I guess that's a metaphor for inheritance of like even if you grew up poor but made it uh yeah that mentality is still passed on to your children that's really reaching but who knows yeah maybe i don't, I don't know who fucking knows? <laughs> at least yeah. fucking will smith wasn't in this movie am i right oh yikes <laughs> will smith jaden smith man if this movie was made 10 years ago it would have been the whole smith family oh my god right Right, <laughs> that's what would have happened. It would have been like after listening Earth. to her own song. She's whipping her hair yeah. back and forth. Oh my god, that's exactly what would have happened. Just the, the that's exactly what would have happened. Fuck the police, but instead it's I whip my hair back and forth. Just <laughs> oh fucking killing like twins of Tim Heidecker and shit, and fucking those creepy ass twins. Yeah. Oh my god, it wouldn't have been Tim Heidecker. It would have been Seth Rogen. <laughs> right? <Wouldn't laughs> Can we recast this movie for two thousand nine? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I could see that. Um, so let's, all right, this might be our biggest con, or at least it's my biggest con. How about that twist? And how about how predictable? It was? Oh God, <laughs> literally. Okay. Oh, so man. I spoke to Spencer the day that we, uh, we watched the movie. Shout out to Spencer, made our theme song. Idiots discuss the universe. Homie of the show. Cool guy. Cool podcast. Get me on your show, you fucker. Um, and he was just like, we were talking about he's like oh yeah yeah patty and uh, jeremy our two friends up there are going to see it tonight uh, up in portland and he's like so uh was she the bad guy the whole time because that's what i told them <laughs> and i was like yep <laughs> yep yep yeah that's uh it was as soon as i saw the two little girls at the beginning of the movie in the the maze and like as soon as she turns around and the other girl doesn't it's like dude they got switched <laughs> like the whole time I was like these two people got switched yeah <laughs> like that's gonna be the twist they didn't show anything um, so it just went to black so of course they got switched yeah yeah so I want to talk to you about something a little bit more controversial mm. but these are some connections that I made okay. Jordan Peele is our generation's M. Night Shyamalan yeah maybe we'll give him one more movie it's, yeah he gets well i i'd say like he's probably got another couple good ones up his sleeve mm -hmm. but i'm seeing like the the weight on like the twist ending i'm seeing that already right mm -hmm. and i'm seeing like how his first movie stellar nearly perfect just like six cents the six cents is a good movie uh -huh, sure um and then diminishing <laughs> returns perhaps i'm hoping he goes to his twilight zone tv show as a huge because this was just like one of the episodes of twilight zone Kind of, yeah. It was a, yeah. A, one of the doppelganger episodes. This this might have, you know, this movie might have benefited from being a shorter form. Yeah. Well, huh. this movie was. There's a lot of fluff in the middle. A lot there. of fluff. A lot of just like long shots with music uh, throughout the movie. And then the exposition. Again, I cannot stress enough that Lupita Nyong'o, no matter how you frame her uh, with like the weird, like I'm taking up half the screen and I'm so much in the forefront with Lupita Nyong'o and the back and then like i'm gonna show a child dancing two different children dancing like for 10 minutes it's not good yeah. it's just it wasn't good yeah um i don't know i i there was a lot of fluff um and i see the thing about like jordan peele in general is that he's so much better at directing dialogue mm -hmm. than uh than m night Shyamalan is oh yeah because he doesn't um, know who, what a fucking person is yeah, yeah. M. Night Shyamalan's an alien. Yeah, he's a fucking Whereas Shyamalan. Jordan Peele, is, Jordan Peele has a lot more, like, experience up his sleeves with humor, and that's where this movie shines, is in its comedy. So, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, I got the impression, like, hey, maybe Jordan Peele has a couple more movies before they start to get, like, not good. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm kind of curious to see where he goes in the future, but I'm calling it now. I'm seeing those parallels. I, uh, so, my big thing with you know? this movie, uh, I went, again, to, like, a majority black theater, 
and yeah. the general feeling in the crowd was a lot of this fucking artsy bullshit he was doing, which don't get me wrong, technically beautiful. They were like, the fuck is this artsy bullshit? Like, yeah. it's like he's kind of like placating more towards white audiences with his black fronted movies, which is kind of weird, which Get Out wasn't like that as much. That's kind of like the exact message that Get Out was trying to squash. Yeah, exactly. And it you feels, know, you know what I mean? It feels like just like cookie cutter, you know, horror movie, but we put black people in the front and like shot it better. I don't know. It's it's a, like it's a unique enough concept. I think in execution, it just ends up falling a little flat yeah. or being a little long winded. Definitely long winded. Oh my god. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm really curious to see where Jordan Peele goes, because I definitely get the impression that he worked for a long time on Get Out and then re- was either pressured to some greater or lesser extent to make another movie or was like excited about the success of Get Out and wanted to put something out else out as quickly as possible to keep his name in the forefront Mm -hmm. and i I wonder if that's gonna because us is obviously i mean like we could talk about box office numbers all day but i think you and i both know that this movie is fucking killing it at the box office right now on a 20 million dollar budget it's already quadrupled its budget no it's that's fucking awesome and you know what more power to him because i think i do think that he has a lot of potential and a lot of talent and I, I want to see more stuff come from this guy. And if it takes, you know, a movie that maybe wasn't as good as his debut um, to keep his name going forward and keep his creative outlet there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I mean, I support that. Yeah. I mean, I bought tickets to this movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for, for so. that, that's why I say I want to see him kind of go back into the Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone is pretty much written. You don't have to write your own Twilight Zone. You know, it's. Pretty cool. I wonder if I wonder if he's gonna write original episodes. I'm guessing he's gonna. It's gonna be more like a TV show. It's gonna be more writers' roomy as opposed to him working on it by himself. I want him to right. get absorbed into that for three or four seasons, it's then come back in like 2023, 2024 with a fucking hit. You know, I'd love it. That would if be he really took cool. His time because that is really there was a rush. That's clearly to this where. Movie. Yeah, there was, and that that was something that got out really shined with is that it seems so perfected Mm -hmm. it was so honed and everything like just these little breadcrumbs i've said it so many times now but the mystery and get out is so satisfying and it's so interesting to listen to and watch Mm -hmm. because it's just fucking good (laughs) like a lot more show than tell you know he didn't spoon feed you yes you saw she said oh i've never dated another black guy then you see the photo of her with a bunch of different black guys you know and it gives gives you chills it's creepy chills but he, he doesn't turn to the screen and go she she has lied to me. She yeah. has dated other you black to men. Me. <laughs> like yeah. it was, you like my Lupita Nyong'o. We are Americans. Yeah, yeah. And, and <laughs> Which, everything about Get Out was so perfected. This movie seemed to have some stumbles, but it still ended up. I mean, it's like the most popular movie in theaters right now. Yeah. So it's it's like. People really like it, and everyone I've talked to has been like, it's amazing, and I've been like, I kind of, I don't know. I don't think it's amazing. I don't think, I don't think it's bad. I think that I've seen better horror movies, even like... I've definitely seen better horror movies. I've seen better comedies, too. This movie almost, it, this didn't even feel like a, like a, like a horror movie, man. No, it didn't. <laughs> like, especially, like, there was this huge deflate, like, right in the middle of the movie, and then it really picks up once they get over to Tim Heidecker's house. But then that that like third uh, the third act was just a little I don't know for me yeah so we only have one I, I, I put up a, um, a poll on our Instagram about which one's better only one person yeah. said us it's Chad oh really mm-hmm. I, you know I haven't talked to Chad about it yet we should have him on the podcast again yeah, soon that'd be great maybe maybe Shazam. on our our break episode yeah on Shazam. <laughs> a totally mindless movie like i'm ready for that movie just to be so mindless but um yeah so th- that's interesting uh yeah like i think get out was just a superior film it was it was I, a I lot think it was it's the pacing that's the big thing i think the acting wise music mm-hmm. wise and shooting it wise it was about the same but yeah, pacing. almost almost parallel. It was the pacing and the writing was just the writing was just so good and get out. That's like one of the best screenplays I've seen yeah. probably ever. I mean, like it's this movie, really the, exceptional the kind of more slashery feel wasn't conducive to one of Jordan Peele's big strengths. And that is dialogue. Exactly. He's so good at doing that. I don't like dialogue ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and I liked the dialogue and get out. Yeah, It was simple. Like, it was easy. It was, you know. 
you were you were horrified by the mundane and in this the fucking horror was mundane yeah exactly the slasher element you're right get out wasn't a slasher film get out was a mystery like a thriller mystery film Mm -hmm. this is this was it it, or at least it was billed as like a slasher Mm -hmm. and then it ended up being like like and i don't know what (laughs) like i i guess like thriller (laughs) type deal like it very much not conducive towards a uh, what he's really good at, like you said, like dialogue, but also putting a honed social message on the screen that like you can relate to, mm. you know? And I think that like uh, he comes from such a sci-fi horror background, like kind of like I do where, cause you're going to hate me, but I compare get out a lot to the man from earth in terms of construction and how closed world it was. Uh, yeah, and it's in its self-contained scope. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. And I think yeah. that that's what he. I, I mean, like we we have two data points, so it's impossible to speculate. But I think he did really well yeah. with that because that is a really good jumping-off point for cerebral horror and sci-fi. Yeah, you know, this is another parallel I'm seeing with Shyamalan, though. It's that there's a a, a curve to Shyamalan's movies and. Uh, or not a curve, but there's a there's a graph, and it's like the quality goes up as the production budget goes down. <laughs> Have you noticed that with Shyamalan? Yeah. So like it's almost like having that five million dollars or whatever get out costs like five million dollars, right? Yeah. And this it was is something 20. like diminutive like that, mm-hmm. and and so like it's it's like because he had to make every dollar count. I feel like he really perfected a lot of things. Whereas with this, it's like he has a bigger budget and almost wants to give like a bigger scope to it, but that's not one of his strengths. His mm-hmm. strength is in more self. Honestly, his strength is in small, self-contained sketch comedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know that's how he's worked. He works. It's like very yeah. intimate and all that. Let me tell you. So, so this is you know, get out six cents, right? Then we go down a bit. Yeah. Stuart Little us, right? <laughs> all right. Then we're gonna see a little. <laughs> Bring it back up. Unbreakable Twilight Zone signs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. Next thing you know, they, they, he's building a movie called The Woman The Woman in the uh, the Liquid. And <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. And and the black happening. <laughs> the black happening the blackening oh god <laughs> that's terrible the, and then, i hate that i just said that <laughs> i hate that i just said that yeah oh man yeah i don't know man like i i want him to succeed mm-hmm. i i really like him you know i really do yeah it's like he he is like shamalong without the clunky dialogue yeah or like, the ego you know you, you don't you still Dude, don't see ego thank, in this. thank god goodness he doesn't do the like masturbatory cameo Mm -hmm. in every one of his films god that is so exhausting he he did things like uh keegan michael key had a cameo and get out for like a millisecond did he really i didn't even see that yeah that's kind of cool like that's nice that's like the guy who got you there guy who's like now in like college friends or whatever that show's called on netflix that poor sucker oh man get them together let them write a horror movie together let them write like a comedy horror. That's where that's what George Key and Peele should get together and write a comedy horror film, like The Cabin in the Woods. It's one of my favorite movies ever. Or Scary Movie. <laughs> Wait. Uh, no, no. Scary no. Movie Five. <laughs> scary Movie Seven, Scream. or however many there are. Scream Three: The Screamining. I actually saw Leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> Scream Three: We all scream for ice cream. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I think we. Let's right. uh, make a scream movie. <laughs> we've uh, we've made our way through the pros and cons. Uh, we have, we have. Let's 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 take things back a little early. Get into our. Do you want to do rating review at the end, or do you want to announce our picks? Let's do that. Let's do that first. We're gonna let's do rating and review, okay. and then uh, and then what we'll do is we'll have people. We'll keep you guys attached for the uh, the picks, and okay. we'll do that at the very end. Okay. Keep you guys on your toes. Keep them right there right. on them toes. I'm gonna exactly. suck on them like a bunch of toes. Exactly. I'm gonna so, suck um, on those toes, baby. <laughs> oh, everyone's turned it off. <laughs> uh, uh, a couple of people are are cutting off their own genitals. Ah, no, I get this. This is an adequate adequate response to what I just said. <laughs> Um, so why don't you go first? Do you have five words for us? And do you have, uh, what else? Do you have your review and 
all that thing stuff <laughs> uh dancing children makes me upset <laughs> <laughs> literally right. like like she's like i'm like okay she's gonna monologue she's gonna get to the point but no it is monologue plus dance routine <laughs> yeah kind of with like yeah, okay yeah and then yeah. this movie was fine like it was no it wasn't fine though it had really great elements but was stomped on by its own lore and like kind of didn't know what it wanted to be Jordan Peele take more time when you're writing your movies. I'm giving this movie a four out of ten. Ooh, that's kind of a brutal review. Yeah. All right, all right. Um, yeah, uh, my five words are going to be us versus Get Out. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'll leave that on a question mark for you guys. Um, this yeah, this movie succeeded in its comedic parts. This movie succeeded in its cinematography and most of its dialogue being pretty good. Um, Honestly, like all of the acting choices were exceptional. Um, it just kind of fell flat with its social message, which is something Jordan Peele is great at. And I don't know why he it seemed like like you said, it seemed rushed or it seemed incomplete. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, like it wasn't a bad movie by any means. Um, I don't really want to perpetuate that message because I did kind of feel pretty good about it. Like, I actually kind of liked it. Um, I'm going to give this movie a 6 out of 10. You should definitely see it. Everybody is talking about it right now. I mean, like, it's the movie to see right now. Um, and it's good for conversation. But uh, I think overall, I mean, it's not a bad film. It's really not. It's just not as good as Get Out. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not. That's and uh, and I I'm, I look forward to seeing Peel's career go forward. Yeah, I think it should be an interesting one. Yeah, for sure. Um, so on that note, we, I think we kind of came to a similar consensus on this movie. We we got we, we both had very similar cons. There was enjoyment that I got out of it, but it was mostly in the comedic elements. You know. Yeah, I mean, like, listen, we thought very th similar things about what went well and wrong with the movie. I think we just had different standards of like what is a good movie. Uh, oh yeah totally but how boring would this podcast be if we agreed unanimously <laughs> no you're right it's a six no i'm yeah. i'm sorry <laughs> sir <laughs> so um we got some picks for you guys Ooh, we got some picks yeah april's gonna be a busy month for us we're looking forward to it um it's my birthday yeah yeah exactly ash is gonna be in town towards the end of the month for avengers endgame by the way we're fucking excited yeah so fucking i've been excited since infinity war i've been excited since before that since before i was born i knew this movie was gonna come out that's right i'm taking credit for the mcu <laughs> yeah what do you say to that <laughs> i'm confused yep <laughs> read it and weep ash <laughs> it's one of those movies that starts with like the baby inside the belly when i was not even but a, a breath of life i had thought of a movie series which would culminate in the death of thanos <laughs> or like thanos snaps and then it's like freeze frame <laughs> yeah that's me <laughs> <laughs> you're probably wondering how i got here <laughs> Well, I guess yeah. if we're going to tell that story, we got to start at the very beginning. <laughs> I hope it's one of those, yeah. like a Disney Channel movie. And then it's just like <laughs> fucking intro credits, but over just random like pictures of you growing up. And then it ends with you as a 12 year old <laughs> finding the infinity stones and creating the Russo brothers. <laughs> so, so what is your first pick of the month, Ash? Uh, he gets the first one. He pulled the my girlfriend's in town car let's not use that language yeah. she gets mad at me if i ever do uh <laughs> oh okay all right so anyway <laughs> uh we haven't talked ahead. about it uh just <laughs> sorry Haley. we i didn't tell him that it's just it's not my fault um <laughs> stop sweating i can hear it <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. uh, so uh my first pick is uh it's a PG-rated movie. came out in 2018. It's about a young motocross racer named Miles Hill who helps a top-secret robotic combat dog evade its ruthless creator and the military. It's called AXL. What? I've yeah. never heard of this. I first saw it on an airplane coming home from Austin, and I have wanted to pick it since then. 
AXL. Mm-hmm. I've never fucking heard of this. Look at the fucking cover, dude, and tell me this doesn't look like the worst <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Everyone Google it. Everyone Google it. Google it right now. I know you're. This is so bad. This is insane. Oh my right? god! I can't wait to talk about this. It's gonna be fucking motocross, shitty CGI robotic dogs, and the military. Dude, and, hell yeah! And a hackney love interest. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. This when did this even come out? 2018. <laughs> Why did I, I guess I know why I didn't hear about it? <laughs> oh, it's a Netflix movie. Is it a Netflix? No, it's not a Netflix movie. All right. Well, we'll see. <laughs> AXL. There you go, guys. A dash X dax dash L. God, I can't even say that. God. <laughs> Ten million dollars is the budget. It only made eight point three million in the box office. Let's help what? it out, oh. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Let's give this. Let's throw some uh, quality. This movie's way. It needs it. Some quality kashish. Some love. Give it some love. Uh, Popularity. It's trending. It's up to twelve thirty three on IMDb. Oh my god! <laughs> right? It's so low, dude. Dude, this is terrible. <laughs> I can't wait. This looks so fucking bad. This came out at the end of August. Yeah. Jesus Christ! I didn't even see a, a trailer for this. Oh, it's gonna be right. awesome. Um, I'm gonna take our second pick of the month since you uh, stepped on the last pick of the month. Hmm. Uh, and we're gonna watch Shazam. Shazam, yeah, totally. Yeah. I, I actually kind of want to see Shazam. I think it's gonna be fun. <laughs> I don't, or or at least brainless. Like, yeah. I, I think it came down to like Hellboy or Shazam, and we decided on Shazam. Yeah, because right? I can't stand how yeah, David so. Harbour's face moves in that trailer. And I know it just doesn't look good. They like over makeuped him. Haley and I like, almost way got in a fight because she looked up a photo of it and said it looked fine. And then I said it looks like the shittiest of the Underworld movies. And she like, I love Underworld. And I was like, I don't know what we're doing here. <laughs> it's just like cancel your I, flight. I don't know if it's like like Ron Perlman is just better at being dressed up in pounds of makeup and prosthetic fur or something because he's. And Ron Perlman in every movie is dressed up like a beast. <laughs> yeah, but you know, there is one person who's a little bit better at it, and honestly, I think we should have considered him for Hellboy. Who? Michael what? Chiklis. <laughs> oh, you know what? That would have been pretty good, actually. <laughs> I would have totally loved a Michael Chiklis Hellboy. Oh my god, that would have been fucking awesome, <laughs> actually. Just get Michael Chiklis super ripped. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> there should be a movie where Michael Chiklis plays that one astronaut. That went to the ISS okay. and like he has a twin. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. And they like compared them. Did you ever hear about that experiment? There was a twin one state on earth and was just like did something else or like worked for NASA in a different department. <laughs> Michael and <he> Chiklis <laughs> and Michael <laughs> Chiklis <laughs> <laughs> is uh, that one astronaut experiment. That's what the movie's called. <laughs> Or uh, twins in space would be called. It sounds like a pornography. Is twins <laughs> in space? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, um, yeah, actually, Michael Chiklis would have been kind of fun for this. <laughs> I'm surprised. Yeah, because David Harbor is not funny. <laughs> yeah, the thing about David Harbor is like he really kind of like I don't know. Stranger Things really took off, right? Mm. And I don't th- I don't know anything he did before Stranger Things, but like I don't know. It's very odd choice very big leap going from you know netflix smaller time uh miniseries type deal to to a major motion picture and i don't know if it was a good choice but we'll probably end up talking about it um yeah we'll probably end up seeing it yeah so uh i want to talk about my choice now because i have the third pick of the month um it's gonna be I brought this movie up before, um, during our mailbag episode specifically. We're going to watch Poultry Geist Night of the Chick Undead as our third movie of the month. <laughs> I am scraping the bottom of the barrel. Oh, this really? movie is a guilty pleasure for me. It is fucking gross. <laughs> I hate you. Yeah, you're going to hate this. You're going to hate it so much. I don't think you've ever seen it before, right? Like, honestly, anything that makes a worse dad joke than I do uh, is like. <laughs> borderline sociopathic <laughs> it's also part musical <laughs> like in case you need a reason to be more concerned i love a musical. also a musical musicals are great not this one <laughs> 
This movie's disgusting, but it's fun. Just let it, let it, just let it wash over you. It's I'm disgusting not. and bad, and you're gonna love it. I'm gonna hate it. <laughs> All right, thanks, dude. Yeah. Uh huh. And then, and then, um, we kind of blew our load on the last one, but we are doing Avengers Endgame for the last episode of the month. Ash is gonna be in town. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna. It's gonna be a good time. Mm-hmm. Seriously, it's gonna be forward to it. Oh, yeah. so excited. Oh yeah, it's gonna be really. It's gonna be exciting. our most coked out episode where we just sound like teenagers or like children who've had too much sugar. <laughs> Dude, that well, that's what happened last time. Yeah. <laughs> we're just like, oh my god! So excited. Yeah, Infinity the Infinity War episode. We were crazy. Yeah, we were crazy. Like, just so excited about it. But I mean, it was exciting. You know, of course we were excited. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's what's coming for you guys in the month of April. Uh, Shazam mm-hmm. and Endgame, the episodes you're going to listen to. <laughs> and then the ones that, where we jerk ourselves off over our terrible choices in movies. <laughs> exactly. Axel and Poultry Guys, The Night of the Chick Undead. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be so good. <laughs> um, but uh, guys, find us on Instagram at For the Story Podcast. Find us on gmail or just send us a gmail or an email whatever you want to do just you know, do whatever if you don't send us a gmail why don't you go fuck yourself yahoo yeah exactly yahoo mail uh, hotmail anyway send us an email for the story podcast at gmail.com um yeah what else do we have for him is that gonna be it that's it baby we'll see you again oh next week god yeah we'll see you guys next week with a review of <laughs> axel, axel. <laughs> 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 God, this looks so bad. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm like Bye, still guys. See you it. next week. All right, guys. We love you so much. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, we are Americans. Bye.